Hi, I am David Ezekiel, transitional pastor for the First Federated Church of Peoria. Welcome to our midweek moment. One of the most intriguing stories to emerge during World War II occurred just shy of a year after the Pearl Harbor attack and involved an American icon. The incident captured the attention of the free world and has been described as the first American epic of the war. Captain Eddie Rickenbacker had gained fame as a daring race car driver before becoming the United States' top scoring fighter ace of World War I and also a Medal of Honor recipient. Rickenbacker was a strong voice for aviation, and on several occasions he testified before congressional committees about actions he felt would be detrimental to both military and civilian aviation. In late 1942, he was asked to travel the Pacific Theater as a $1 a day non-military observer to evaluate and report on the status of U.S. Army Air Force's combat units stationed there. Flying aboard a well-worn Boeing B-17, he and the seven-man crew departed Pearl Harbor for the South Pacific. They never arrived at their destination. The plane had to ditch in the ocean. Then their ordeal began. The eight men climbed aboard three small life rafts with barely enough room to move, which has been compared to shoehorn a size 10 foot into a size 9 brogan. There was no water, and the only food they had managed to salvage were four oranges. Sharks followed the boats constantly, often bumping into them, and some sharks were larger than any of the life rafts. The sun was merciless and intolerably hot. Every inch of exposed flesh was badly blistered. The nights were cold. They were parched from thirst. They were very hungry, and they were cramped together in those life rafts. Salt water soaked into skin that cracked open and then dried, only to be soaked again. During daytime, the men looked forward to the coolness of the nights, and at night, they craved the heat of the days. But during their ordeal, they followed a daily service of scripture, a hymn, and a prayer for deliverance. It would take a miracle to sustain them. And you know what? A miracle occurred. On the eighth day stranded at sea, Rickenbacker recounted that it was following a service in the oppressive heat with his hat pulled down over his eyes to keep out some of the glare. He finally managed to doze off and he continued. Something landed on my head. I knew that it was a seagull. I don't know how I knew. I just knew. Everyone else knew too. No one said a word. But peering out from under my hat brim, without moving my head, I could see the expression on their faces. They were staring at that gull. The gull meant food, if I could catch it. They ate meat and bone and used the intestines as bait to catch fish. The survivors were sustained and their hopes renewed because a lone seagull, uncharacteristically hundreds of miles from land, sustained them. It was manna in the wilderness. It would still be a grueling two weeks before they were rescued. Those men experienced several other little miracles during their travails, but that seagull made the difference for their salvation. Later in life, the story is told, Rickenbacker would often go feed the seagulls on the shore. It was his personal moment of remembrance and gratitude for his salvation. My point is this, in your life, you've experienced moments of travail, maybe even an extended ordeal. In the midst of it, of it all, there was that one moment, that one small miracle that happened for you. My question is, how have you remembered and celebrated that moment with gratitude for your own deliverance and salvation? If you've never started such a ritual, start now. I guarantee you, it will make a difference in your life. And those of you who have such rituals, you know exactly what I'm speaking about, don't you? 
I'm David Ezekiel. Thank you for spending this midweek moment with me today.